Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Today, I'm presenting part two of my mid-January tour of the 25,000 square foot manufacturing facility of Audio Group Denmark in Aalborg. Today's focus will be primarily on loudspeakers and their motors as we continue the full facility walkthrough with our guide, AGD founder and CEO, Lars Christensen. Hi, baby. After watching part one, it should be quite evident. That's enough, man. I love you too. That this is a fascinating state-of-the-art facility. And you should also know that AGD, who brings us Anzus, Avic, and Borison Acoustics products, is, to my knowledge, a unique entity in today's manufacture of high-performance audio. How is that? Well, well, there are only a few speaker companies out there, like YG Acoustics of the United States and Focal of France, who also manufacture their own drivers. AGD not only makes their own drivers, but they also make everything they produce at this facility, from cables to DACs, integrated amplifiers, power distribution systems, Ethernet switches, and every single loudspeaker in their lineup. And while they do contract some very advanced services from the Danish Technological Institute in Aarhus, Everything else is done completely at this facility in Aalborg. Let's take a look at what Lars has to share with us today. So total, we have five people in the electronic company, and you can see we we owe quite a few amps away. I yes, think it's eighteen pieces waiting to get out right now. We have Bjarne in here. That is in charge of the daily, the daily routine. And um, oh. right, this is Ben. Good morning. <laughs> so uh, right now he's putting together a 280 deck. And here you can see we are using a lot of noise cancellation in a, a piece of equipment like this. So you better understand why we use between 8 to 10,000 uh, Tesla coils on a monthly basis. Wow. We have been busy and uh, with the new Axis integrated amp, you, you just briefly saw that, yes. uh, that we also are going to employ quite a few people here to speed up the production. So now we move into the speaker department. Great. And uh, you heard quite a few of them yesterday. I did, I heard uh, quite a few. Before we go there, of course, so we have our own uh, studio. Uh, and uh, you know when you start to talk about high quality lenses and the light and so on, you ah, you pay, you yes. pay. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, Thomas Bergman's uh, main interest is to shoot photos and videos. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, we we hate when we look like amateurs. We, no, you rarely do. So we we want to look like. Professional. <laughs> you want to look like what you are, yeah. yeah. So it's easy to, but uh, we shoot all photos and videos in the house. All right. So now we speak us. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's by the way the flight case for the 880 integrated amplifier. Right. When you pay a lot of money for a high quality piece of equipment, it also has to have a proper yes. packaging. So, um, in here, do we measure our speakers? Yes, we do. Because it's a seven by human beings. Let's have to find them. Ah, there you go. There we go. So, of course, we measure our speakers because they are assembled by human beings, and of course, you can have uh, the polarity on a driver in the wrong sure. way, and uh, you'll see it on, a, on the measurements. Sure. And also, if you have a wrong 
component in a cross or, or default, so we, uh, we measure them. But any speaker we make, we always have a listening test. Before. You said you and your son do the listening test before yeah, things go on. Yeah, is my son. Uh, I don't know where it's coming from, but he has excellent hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when he's a youngster, he can hear even some of the highest frequencies. And you and I, <laughs> that's a while ago. I know, yeah, <laughs> that's right? That's a while ago. Right? So uh, that's what we do here. Okay. So uh, we, um, we have, I think, three more guys coming in. In a, in a month or two, I think in speakers. You can see also, that's a, the, the C5, the top of line of our CCS. But you can see we still use high quality coax, which we use in the cables, in the electronics as well. And we also build all drivers in house for sure. the CCS and the, and the Shiro CS. So come back to that anyway. So uh, we increase uh, the size of production. Because, you know, I thought it was three, no, they're going to inform you guys, and uh, they're going to have put themselves in, uh, into this uh, part, we just have re uh, refreshed it, and uh, are soon ready to have four more guys on board. Outstanding. Because you have heard uh, the X-ray speakers, both as shows, but also... Oh, yes. Well, yesterday you heard driven with the axis, yeah. Yeah, and uh, as together with the axis, and uh, <clears throat> that's a small killer system. I it's mind. pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty so impressive. So that's uh, some of our new guys are coming it's in. It's pretty here. impressive. Now indeed. we move into the cave people. I don't know. <laughs> you said have, that yesterday. Have, uh, that's typically the guys in here. Okay? I don't know. They want to sit on top of it, so I don't <laughs> know what's wrong with the guys. So in here you, you find oh. you find Ole. We find Benny on that, and uh, right now we can have a look what Ole is doing because he's assembling a pair of M1s. Ah! So we have the M1s here in front of you, and maybe we can turn them around a little bit. So uh, this is uh, the M1. Yes. And our kids are, how in the hell can you ask $100,000 for a pair of monitors? Yeah. You need to hear them before you ask that That's question. That's one of the things, and you yeah. have heard them. I have heard them, yeah. But you can see uh, the gold corks I showed you in yes. the production of cables we use in here. So all we have, we have spent a fortune. We have the NGL, and if you look inside, you can see the Tesla coil, a third generation of our Tesla data technology inside. So we have two boards sitting there, and they work parallel to Cygnus, but they need uh, one of our power boxes to work optimal. And as you heard yesterday, it's a powerful tool. Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, that's a, a M1, and uh, we are busy. Is that right, Ole? We take. We took a few days off. Right? You and let your then, people take days off. You're not uh, the slave driver everybody says you are. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm worse. Yeah, <laughs> you can actually see that's uh, Benny is assembling the driver for oh, yes. an M1, and we're going closer to it. Uh, in other part of the factory, so we have an idea, but that's uh, our Sikona 3 different uh, basket you see below. We have uh, our iron-free motor system, and in this case it's the, the, the zero rings, and we have, uh, you saw, we're building actually the, the cones in-house. Yeah. You saw that yesterday. So uh, it's maybe one of the most high-tech drivers in the world, and that's what you find in a, in a speaker like the M1. Over here, we are sampling. Uh, we put the, we have the, uh, what is called, the cones, where we put the rubbers around, the spiral ring, and put the whole motor system together, and that's in principle most uh, Benny who's doing that. So, uh, yeah. Those are the coil formers up there. Yeah. So, uh, here we have a. Morten. And Morten is assembling most, not only speakers, but he is also assembling our tweeters. So, um, yeah, this membrane, the weight of it is only one hundredth of a gram. It's one hundredth of a millimeter thick and it can handle temperature of 700 degrees Celsius. 
It's pretty impressive. Behind it, we have the strongest neodymium magnet, it's called N52, which is uh, between six to eight times stronger than any other neodymium. They are expensive, but when you put the motor system together, oh, it looks like this. And we have spent a fortune in developing it, but also a fortune in form of magnets. You can see this is actually the neodymium N52. There we go. They have, have one on each side and one in the middle. So we have to have an efficiency on this wheeler for only 94 dB. Wow. Yeah. When you have no mass, it cannot store energy or close to it. And that's a, one of the big advantages versus the dome treaters because the silk domes, the moving system in a silk dome is between around 60 times more moving mass with a much smaller engine. So when people are talking about high risk, we had a small discussion the other day, you and I. If you have a dome trader, it's simply not fast enough because it needs a much higher level of signal before it can move and stop again. And that means these micro details in the music, and especially in the high frequency area, there's no way you have them. So light and powerful. So that's the hard one in our CCS, in our Shiro, and in our MCS. In the new XS, we have a slightly less advanced motor system, have only an efficiency of 90 dB. What we have been doing is downscaling the Arduino magnets you see in the side. Uh, we still have three, but uh, to put a, a, a tweet on this quality into a pair of speakers for only $11,000 a pair, uh, you have to downgrade somewhere. And that's what we have been doing here. Yeah. Uh, but we do have something special. It was a crazy day in Peter Jensen for exactly 102 years ago who developed a dynamic motor, magnet motor system. Do we have much better magnets today? Yeah. Do we have much be be better materials in form of the cones, the washcoat form, or the rubber surround? Yes. Sure. But it's still a Peter Jensen Danish design. But this is a revolution in mo magnet motor system because we have no iron. And uh, that's one of the questions I think you should ask uh, Michael a little bit later on. Uh, what is the advantage? Is get rid of the iron, and what? Do, do we achieve, but there is something called iron distortion and uh, my partner Michael will tell you more about why we get, want to get rid of it. So it's actually a revolution in technology you have in front of you. And this driver course of the iron free motor system have only 10% of the inductance of any other dynamic driver on the market. Yeah. So it's an advanced piece. For well, fun, um, Michael um, one day said, um, oh, it could be the, with the copper ring we have in our magnet motor system, it could be a challenge to see what silver rings can do. And Benny, you saw in the production, in his spare time he's doing a silver jewelry, so he knows how to sand cast silver. Good. So we made uh, some silver rings and replaced the copper rings with silver. And uh, here we have it. So are we, using, are we using a lot of silver in the past? Yeah, because uh, behind here, oh, each of the plastic containers have contained uh, 10 kilograms of sterling silver. Oh, wow. And uh, silver today <clears throat> is around 1,000 euros a kilogram. Wow. So when you have 10 kilos of sterling silver, you, we are talking about a lot of money. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So... Um, when we get the silver, it's, uh, it comes like this. That's sterling silver. So what we do is that in our oven behind you, we are uh, bringing the temperature up to 1100 degrees Celsius, and then the silver melts. And then we put them into the sand forms, as you see here. So for each of the ring, we have to make a new form and uh, when they're getting out of the forms, it looks like this. Then we are machining it up, and then they look like this. Then we are sending it down to the Institute of Technology in Aarhus, where they are bombarded uh, for only 92 hours with uh, titanium nitrate, titanium, 
tungstenen, zirconium and the outside. Then they look like this. It's 100% pure silver until it starts oxidizing. Mother Nature cannot do that. You saw also saw, we're going to see it later on, but the mo whole magnet motor system we have been freezing down in cryo. Yes. So minus 196 degrees for only 48 hours. We'll see that a little bit later on. It's why this is still in a, in a vacuum plastic bag. Sure. So we move further into the back of this uh, room. And here we have a vacuum machine. So we have a special lacquer in it. And we take the coils. Uh, they are actually developed by uh, Michael for many years ago, but made by Jensen in, <laughs> in Poland. It's, it's, a, it's a Danish company, actually. And uh, we put them into the vacuum, and it is uh, pulling out all the air between uh, the copper sheets. And, uh, and when you knock on it, you can hear it's mechanical. You have to remember, they are inside the most speakers. Sure. And if this can vibrate more than really want them to vibrate, you hear it. You'll hear it, yeah. Because you have change in inductions. And what is that? Oh, we create signals. Yeah, create the own signal. So any coil we use in any of the CCS and Zero and the MCS, they have been in our freezer. What is it we have in front of us? Ah. <laughs> Yeah, we have part of uh, the the drivers in an M1. These are part of the printed magnesium baskets, yes? No. No, I'm sorry, not magnesium. Zirconium. Zirconium. I'm yeah. sorry. We, uh, we are on our way from Hong Kong, I think Michael and I, for a few years ago, on our way back to Denmark. And when we are traveling, we have more time to talk about what about the future, where are we heading. And, um, and Michael started to talk about really the... the really exotic sport cars only made in few numbers and formula one cars so when you see the the wheels the suspension system with the arms they are typically 3d printed in a titanium and um and when the formula one car crash yeah uh it cost a fortune i would think it's maybe a million of dollars to get every the whole front renewed uh, because 3D printing means that these big items maybe take several weeks to, to do one arm for, for the suspension on the car. So uh, my question is, uh, Michael, can't we make, can't we make a, a basket in 3D printed titanium? Yeah, I think so. So the Institute of Technology have, one of, uh, have some of the most advanced 3D printing machines in the world because they're financed by the Danish state and they are available for small and mid-sized companies, Danish companies. So we asked them to do a basket in titanium. And uh, this is not a basket in titanium, <laughs> this is in zirconium, this one. So they use uh, topologic uh, software where they can calculate where you need the maximum strength, as you can see, have more material here and less where it the, it's only needed to be kept together. So uh, you have to remember when you play that energy, even a small bookshelf, bigger, you have the same energy going in, and of course, a basket behind, you need extreme strength there. They have to keep the motor system in place. But it will also resonate, and if it resonates in a pattern we don't like, our brain says, hmm, it's sticking up. We hear it. So zirconium, you got the the idea about how strong zirconium is <laughs> yesterday. Titanium, titanium is fantastic when it comes to sound. Uh, zirconium is just superior to it. So a basket like this, 3D printed, costs us net a little less than three thousand dollars. I think now you better understand why an M1 speaker is going <laughs> to be expensive. Yes. With half a kilogram of machined um, uh, silvering in it with a, a zirconium basket. And later on, you'll see that we actually are doing the, the cones in-house for the MCS. You can also see, because when you have an arm, you have a magnet motor system, it will bend down maybe a hundredth of a millimeter, maybe two, maybe a tenth of a millimeter. But that why is reinforced in the, in the top.
Yes. So so we make sure that the 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 voice coil is moving straight as possible into the magnetic gap. So um, another thing. I think you, you got pretty shocked when I showed you. Well, I wasn't shocked. I was impressed. Um, <laughs> I, impressed. I mean, I understand eddy currents, and this this is a great demonstration of so why this what you're is doing a, works. Made from exactly the same manufacturer. It's the same uh, winding around it, same ventilation. But there's a huge difference. One is made in out of aluminum, and one is made out of titanium. Al aluminum is a safe card because al aluminum uh, have a built-in break in form of hysteresis, eddy current. So when you drop it down in a motor system like this, it's floating down. And you move it fast up and down, you feel really high resistance. Sure. And that means that also here in a motor, when you have aluminum voice coil form and people are talking about high race formats, they really don't have, because they also need to get rid of that effect, the eddy current, they need a higher level of signal before it can move and stop again. So, it's very, uh, uh, aluminum is really good when it comes to cooling down the voice coil uh, form. Uh, so that's a, but um, there's something magic to titanium because, oh, that's why we just are drops straight in, no resistance to it. Extremely careful when it comes to the use of aluminum. Sure. Because if you use it for cabinets for speakers or cabinets for electronics, it creates eddy current. And when you have big trams or a big motor, magnet motor system in a speaker, um, we try our very best to get the aluminum as far away from a magnet motor system as possible. Uh, you can see even on the M1 cabinet, do you think uh, the, the metal part here is made in, in uh, aluminum? No, they're made in stainless steel in the right uh, grade of steel. Uh, so even here we are <clears throat> really careful what we do. In each of these weeks, by the way, we have have used a, a three kilograms of pure silver in the magnet motor systems only. Yeah. <laughs> so we have six kilograms of uh, seven, what, how much? Six times thousand dollars worth of silver in it on machines. So it tells you pay for quality. Of course. Yeah. You know, I, I think you'd have to agree that their level of attention to detail, their unique and exhaustive development and manufacturing process, and their level of commitment to excellence is exemplary. Now, I'll have more of this tour, uh, a technical discussion with co-founder, CTO, and chief designer, Michael Borison, and Fleming Rasmussen, and several reviews covering the full spectrum of their products coming in the weeks and months ahead. I hope if you haven't, you'll subscribe and choose to keep notified so that you won't miss anything. As always, thanks for taking the time to drop by. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, Skull!